God, who does wonderful things, we praise you in the words of our Father Francis. Tú eres santo, Señor Dios único, que haces maravillas. Tú eres fuerte, tú eres grande, tú eres altísimo. Tú eres Rey omnipotente. Tú eres Padre Santo, Rey del cielo y de la tierra. Tú eres trino y uno, Señor Dios de los dioses. Tú eres el bien, todo el bien, el sumo bien, Señor Dios vivo y verdadero. Tú eres amor, tú eres caridad. Tú eres sabiduría, tú eres humildad. Tú eres paciencia. Tú eres belleza. Tú eres seguridad, tú eres paz. Tú eres gozo y alegría. Tú eres nuestra esperanza. Tú eres justicia, tú eres templanza. Tú eres toda nuestra riqueza. Tú eres belleza, tú eres mansedumbre. Tú eres protector, tú eres nuestro custodio y defensor. Tú eres fortaleza, tú eres refugio. Tú eres nuestra esperanza, tú eres nuestra fe. Tú eres caridad, tú eres nuestra dulzura. We thank you, holy God, for gathering us here together on this joyful day to celebrate the completion of our studies and to mark our transition into the world as scholars and ministers. Help us to follow in the footsteps of our Father Francis and our Mother Claire, that we might share our gifts generously with a world much in need of wisdom, of joy, of justice, and hope. Bless all those who are here today, students, graduates, faculty, staff, regents, trustees, and all who, from a distance, share in the happiness of this day. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we might embody through our words and our actions the truth of your love incarnate in the world. We make this prayer in the name of that love, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Porque una sola cosa es necesaria. Esta sola es mi vida con ser por amor de Dios. Hay que entender que 
acordando de los propósitos, viviendo siempre como lo pagamos, pretendas por tu país, hagas por tu casa y no por But with swift pace, light step, and swerving feet, so that you can step stir up the best, they go forward securely, joyfully, and swiftly, on the path of true happiness, believing nothing, agreeing with nothing, that will dissuade you from this commitment, or that there is something wrong for you on the way, so that nothing prevents you from offering your vows to the Most High in perfection. To which the Spirit of the Lord is called. ceremonies we often hear the words we did it and today is no exception however I felt the need to reflect on what exactly did we do it wasn't just that we spent a few years of our lives attending classes to earn a degree no our accomplishment lies in the fact that we heard the loud whispers of God calling us to become better disciples and as our Blessed Virgin Mary we all said yes to God. Today, I am grateful and humble to stand before you representing my fellow graduates in sharing our wonderful journey of enlightenment at the Franciscan School of Theology, or as we all know it, FSD. We share our experiences to give glory to God and be a testimony of the wonderful things God can make possible when we journey with him. Our journey led us to a special learning place where we not only learned that theology is faith-seeking understanding or the important events in the history of Christianity, among many other subjects. The truth is 
that the Franciscan School of Theology is not your traditional academic institution. It is a special place where theology students are allowed to experience what it, it means to be a member of a loving Christian community. In this place, we learn to embrace the Franciscan tradition and spirituality. The following are brief descriptions of what my fellow graduates had to say about their experience at FST. Maria Lamas Lavarie was once asked why she was studying theology. Her reply was simple but insightful. I am studying theology to know what I have to do to go to heaven. I don't want a degree, she said. I just want to go to heaven. Maria, I'm sorry to disappoint you. In this case, the answer, the answer you were seeking comes with a degree. Greta Lopez Leon reflected on how FST allow us to encounter a faith learning community that encourage us to live more as disciples of Jesus. She describes FST as a special, peaceful learning place where the desire to do God's work is reaffirmed. Rosa Sanchez used the F Rosa Sanchez stated that FST focuses on people and their gifts, and it embraces the uniqueness of each person without judging. William Hines reflected on how impressed he was by the faculty and the excellent education they provided us and their unique understanding of our life situations. William also reflected on how caring and present our classmates were with each other. For many of us, FST became more than a learning community. It became a second family because meaningful relationships were built over time. Pamela Smith. Pamela added that FSD is a safe place where we can express ourselves and learn from one another. Pamela also liked that the Franciscan tradition emphasizes love instead of sin. Leticia Trent boys that as lay people, our Franciscan education calls us to care for one another and care for our neighbors, to be the voice of the marginalized and bring their needs to the clergy. We are all called to bring people to an encounter with the living Christ and bring the Franciscan charism to the peripheries of our society. Ivan Mora. Ivan is grateful to FSD for allowing him to, expose, to be exposed to the dimensions of our church where love is put into action. Ivan appreciates that FSD constantly emphasizes putting the gospel into practice, which translates into faith, seeking action with love. Ryan Martin, enjoy the willingness of most of the students and professors to strive towards upholding the church teachings, as well as learning Franciscan history. He expressed that regardless of the career he ultimately chooses, he hopes to take what he has learned and use it to help foster peaceful interpersonal relationships among those he encounters. As for me, I feel blessed to be part of this amazing learning community. And I echo the same sentiment as my fellow graduates. We, the graduates of 2022, would like to thank all the people that made our learning experience unforgettable. First and foremost, we thank God for guiding us to FST and being present through the whole learning process, especially when we struggle the most. We want to thank our families and friends for their unconditional support and words of encouragement. We could not have done it without you. We thank our classmates for being part of this amazing community. We appreciate your willingness to become agents of peace and love. The world needs all of us to spread Franciscan values. We extend a special thanks to the school's generous benefactors, since for many of us, your generosity made our journey possible. We are grateful for your kindness and for being instruments of God. 
The work we do in the world will be the fruit of your generosity. We thank every faculty member for sharing with us your knowledge and brightening our minds and our hearts. Thank you. Thank you for teaching us that knowledge is a possession we need to share with others. Most importantly, thank you for teaching us the Franciscan value of humility, not with words, but with your actions. We thank the administrative personnel for making everything very accessible and for always keeping us updated. Thank you to the Franciscan Regents, Board of Directors, and Trustees. And last but not least, thank you to our beloved school president, Father Garrett Galvin, for making sure that we had a meaningful, life-changing education. My fellow graduates, thank you for listening to God's loud whispers and for deciding to embark on this journey with one another. We have not only grown in wisdom, but also in love. Today, we leave FST not only as theologians, but as little brothers and sisters of St. Francis and all creation. Our mission is to spread the Franciscan values and spirituality and make our corner of the world a better place with the hope that these values spread to the rest of the world. Thank you all for allowing me to see glimpses of our Lord Jesus in you. Thank you. But the power invested in me by the state of California and the Association of Theological Schools, I thereby grant you these degrees and all the privileges therein attached.
Maria Angela Lamas Lavari. Thesis entitled, titled, The Latina Feminist Liberation Realities of Professor M. P. Aquino and Sister Ida Barra. Professor John Kiesler, Director. To be heard by her grandchildren, Kennedy, Luca, and Maury Lavari, and Professor John Kiesler.
Professor Darlene Price, Director. To be headed by her husband, John Price, and Professor Darlene Price. Any graduate program requires hope. Yes, I'm sure that moments of feeling alone, of experiencing doubt, of being overwhelmed, and just basic fatigue are a part of our stories too. But hope, being the steadfast virtue that it is, has had the last word. Before I go any further, I want to make sure we're, on, we're all on the same definitional page with hope. Colloquially, when we speak of hope, we are referring to a desire for a particular outcome. We might say, I hope my grandson's piano recital goes well. I hope that lasting peace comes to the Ukraine soon. I hope I get the scholarship I applied for. I hope I didn't leave the oven on back at the house. Although desiring holy, grace-filled outcomes is good and a part of hope, Christian hope also goes beyond outcomes and is more akin to trust. The Catechism of the Catholic Church reminds us that desiring true happiness is a longing placed there by God. Hope is our response to this holy longing. Hope helps us to persevere and respond with creativity when we face challenges. It is sometimes all we have in the most difficult moments of our lives. In these darkest hours, this hope can sustain us. It buoys us even when we face formidable obstacles and it brings us a determination and a gladness. And beyond the catechism, we have specific insights on hope from our Franciscan tradition as well. Back in 1985, when Pope Benedict was known as Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, he wrote an article connecting Franciscan poverty to hope. I want to thank our esteemed and beloved Bill Short for passing this source along to me. In this piece, Cardinal Ratzinger synthesizes some of Bonaventure's ideas. The Cardinal shows that Franciscan poverty, in abandoning possessions, finds hope in God alone. This utter dependence on God, far from causing flight from the world, cultivates a life of fruitful interiority that is made manifest in our world. Cardinal Ratzinger contends that to be a Christian is fundamentally to be one who hopes. We have many particular hopes, such as a safe arrival at our destination, a good grade on an exam, recovering from a cold, meaningful employment. Each of these particular hopes orients us to a future that anticipates greater love than what exists in our present. And these many hopes point us to a singular hope, God and the beatific embrace in which we are showered with an infinite love. We see this in Francis' life. It is during all of his difficulties that God tells Francis, live henceforth in serenity as if you were already in my kingdom. No matter what else is going on, God's unshakable promise of love abides. And in a spirit of poverty, 
we're invited to let everything else go. And it's in embracing God's love that we are truly free. Clearly our English word hope does not communicate the richness of this word in Christian theology. The Spanish word esperar gets closer. Esperar can mean to hope, and it can also mean to wait. When we couple these understandings, to hope and to wait, esperar is not just to, to desire something, but to anticipate its arrival. It is an expectant hope that includes trust, a faith that what has been promised will come to fulfillment. This is the ongoing drama of hope from the earliest stories of our faith. God promises and we trust. Hope is what brings many students to FST. When we first realize we want to deepen our relationship with God or pursue a career in ministry, we are responding to a hope to manifest our professional vocation as well as our vocation to holiness. When we show up for orientation day, we register for our first semester with hope-filled confidence, even while we might be nervous about this first step of our journey. When we or our fellow students grapple with imposter syndrome, keeping up with the Redian, Turabian style guidelines, or just generally feel overwhelmed, we, we reach out and rally around one another. And when each semester presents more difficult material than the last, we keep going. Sometimes with the awareness of how much this challenge is growing us, and sometimes we feel just plain challenged. But with hope, on we go. As I said earlier, hope seems to have the final word here. Looking over the program, we can see that hope is a thread that runs throughout each thesis. Wendy hopes that every Christian can become a reflection of Christ to the marginalized, making the kingdom of God a reality. Irma hopes that, following the example of Jesus, we elevate, empower, and commission women to be emissaries of the gospel. Will looks to Catholic worker founder Peter Moran and the wisdom he offers for our time. Maria sees the hopes of two Latina fe feminist liberation theologians for a world filled with love and justice for the poor. Gretel reminds us that in the Franciscan tradition, there is life and hope after death. Ryan hopes to illuminate our historical understanding of anti-Catholicism in the United States as a background for recognizing its present-day existence. Ivan shows us that virtue-based ministry is a better way to accompany contemporary young adults. Rosa offers us more compassionate, just, and economically beneficial business practices rooted in human dignity. Pamela identifies the ways we could celebrate the sacrament of confirmation with more theological integrity and pastoral efficacy. Leticia hopes for a church more deeply rooted in the experiences of the laity. And today, when the work of this FST chapter of your lives is finally complete, and you see that this ending points you to a beginning, that is hope inviting you into still greater things. Our world, as wondrous as it is, still has wounds, deep wounds, that are in need of our hope. Hope is ultimately grounded in the assurance of God's promises, in a deep and abiding faith that God is with us and leading us into a life more beautiful and true than we could ever imagine. It is a gateway to the other virtues. Hope allows us to endure events that frustrates us, frustrate us. It grants courage when we are riddled with doubt or lack confidence. It provides kindness and imagination when we find another person annoying or bothersome. It sparks gladness when we are weary. It evokes justice and compassion in the face of another's suffering. Hope buoys us when we might otherwise sink into despair, sin, fear, or hate. Importantly, Hope is, a is more than a desire, it is a choice, and it is a brave choice. It is a choice to keep going when the obstacles are many. It is a choice to reach out when it is easier to close ourselves in. It is a choice to work toward love, peace, justice, mercy, and Christ's inbreaking, 
rather than to go about business as usual. When we act in hope, we witness to our anticipation that God's promises will be fulfilled. And it is this expectant nature of hope that demonstrates much of its power. When we choose hope, we don't just dare to dream differently, we declare that God's promises are in the process of becoming. None of our journeys is yet finished and none should be seen in isolation. Our work, our struggles, and our delights are part of a larger story. We've built on the work of others and still others will build upon our work. I know that each of the students leaned on many others along the way. Fellow students, faculty, staff, family, friends, and ministers walked with them on this hard road. It is my hope that the work you have done and the support you've been offered will bear fruits in the lives of others and in our wider world. We have inspired one another and we know that this inspiration will ripple out into our church, friendships, families, workplaces, communities, and more. Pope Francis's 2019 synodal document, Christus Vivit, ended with a hope-filled wish. I'll close with this as a blessing for everyone gathered here. My joyful hope is to see you keep running the race before you, outstripping all those who are slow or fearful. Keep running, attracted by the face of Christ, whom we love so much, whom we adore in the Holy Eucharist and acknowledge in the flesh of our suffering brothers and sisters. May the Holy Spirit urge you on as you run this race. The church needs your momentum, your intuitions, your faith. We need them. And when you arrive where we have not yet reached, have the patience to wait for us. Peace and good and hope. This weekend, we celebrate the Ascension of the Lord. And this is a, a feast that oftentimes gets a little bit overlooked as it comes in between Easter and Pentecost, two you know, very major solemnities. And yet, I think this is a very apt weekend to graduate because as we think about the Ascension, um, we have an essential promise of Jesus that we hear. Behold, I am sending the promise of my Father with you. And I think in many respects this is what our graduation represents. Because with the ascension, Jesus is no longer with his disciples in the same way. Jesus has to be present to the world in a new way through the Holy Spirit. And our graduation this afternoon marks you being present now to the world in a new way, being present with the gifts that you have been able to learn here at FST and gifts that are not to be reserved for family and friends, but are to be shared with the whole world. So I really look forward to hearing about all the progress you'll be making, to hear about some of the challenges that you will have. And my hope is that you've been equipped with this learning from FST and that you've been equipped with the Franciscan vision so that when there are difficulties and troubles in ministry, when there are difficulties and troubles in our world, which unfortunately, you know, this week we have seen you know, such a horrible, you know, example of in Texas and previously in Buffalo. These are real difficulties, and at the same time, you have real gifts to bring to this world that's in need of the Franciscan vision, that's in need of the hope which Dr. Day so eloquently described. So I congratulate you on finishing your time here with us, and my hope is for the world to recognize your gifts, for your ministry to have lots of challenges and successes, and for you to stay close with us here at FST. Thank you. This is Jesus, my name is my Father, dear God. I am the provincial of the province of Barbara. Uh, in the program, this is Father Martin Barrett, who is the 
River Provincial, and my calendar was originally scheduled so I couldn't be here the last month and changed. So this is a very important uh, reality for me. The school is very important for the, for the province and for, for the church, and so I'm uh, glad to be here. My name is Dr. Martinez. I was also thinking, as my good friend from Garrett was sharing, a profound theological. He tied your graduation to um, uh, ascension and uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit sending you forth. It was very profound. I was thinking, it's not my thought also, but I have a much uh, simpler uh, story to tell, which is actually. Said. When I was 15 in 1970 uh, in the South, gender roles were starting to change. And for my 15th birthday, my mother gave me a large lawn basket with a big bow. I'm the oldest of the animals. And she said, for 15 years, I've done your laundry, and now you have to do it yourself. I wasn't sure if I was really ready for this responsibility. Uh, and I made many mistakes as I, I set out. I learned not to put the red sweatpants in the blue t-shirts. And if you've ever put laundry, if you ever put a dish soap into the washing machine, it does not work. But after almost a half century, I had a great laundry portion. And I am very confident in my ability. But I was thinking about that. I think you know, uh, for a number of years, you've been nurtured by the professors of school, you had each other to support. Wendy and her reflection made beautiful comments that she made about the support of the and so many as I saw here, I said, you're not even sent forth to witness and to live this reality. You experience the FSD, you live in the world that has had difficulties and brokenness, we see this all the time. And we are honored and privileged and gifted to have a chance to be involved in the Franciscan movement. I would pretend that in some ways God calls you to this school, calls you to these studies, and nurture your vocation as a current system. I would also like to remind you, perhaps I do not want to remind you, that the guys in the Brown Rose are not the only keepers of the Franciscan flame. You have a degree for a Franciscan school. You are Franciscans. Those who work in our places, teach in our places, are Franciscans. And it's a great responsibility to live this witness of inclusivity and openness in a world that is very important for them. So now you have your little uh, degrees here. You have your law classes in your hand, and you're ready to go forth into the world. And you will not follow the grace of God, so don't fall on these things. But I think it's a wonderful thing.
And now, future ministers of the church, class of 2022, go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.